Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video, take care. Okay, so let's get on with this tutorial. So today I'm going to be covering four of the NEC or NEC consoles. Uh, we're doing PC Engine, PC Engine CD, Super Graphics, and Super Graphics CD. Some of you out there will realize this is PC Engine as well. But that's a long, complicated history that depends on where in the world you live, just like the Nintendo was Nintendo in certain regions of the world, whereas other regions had the Famicom. So let's just get on with this. Uh, links in my description for the emulator download, and it's a very good one. We are using Airs or Aries. So what we're going to do is just just grab the latest version of this which is version 132 this was last updated in March 2023 and under assets you're going to find a few different files download the one I'm looking at is the MSVC times 64 I'm using a 64-bit processor and I'm using Windows 11 okay so once this has downloaded you're going to get yourself a zip folder if we just open this up and drag out the contents of that zip folder onto the desktop. Okay, so let's just close these windows and let's head straight into the folder which we just extracted. So you've got two subfolders in there, database shaders, license, and of course the emulator itself. So let's just double left click on Ares, Ares. I'm gonna call this Ares from now on, I think. Okay, so you're going to get a Windows protected your PC. There's no reason to suspect it's dodgy, it's a virus, whatever. So run Mway. Okay, so first things first, let's go towards the settings. Let's map your controller. So to do this, settings, and you're going to go to input. And just here, you're going to grab yourself a control pad to play your games with. I use a PS3 controller, as always. And to map this, all we're going to do is just double left click on each one of these on screen and then correspond it with, say, D-pad on your controller. So up, down, left, right, and then select, start, and so on. So let me just figure mine. And you get the idea. So, dependent on how many buttons you got on your controller, just go ahead and uh, finish the rest of that. It's just literally a case of just double left clicking on each one of these and then pressing a button on your controller. And we're then going to press close. So, like I said, this tutorial is going to cover a few different consoles from NEC or NEC. Uh, so, let's start off with PC Engine. So if we go to load, you're going to find several different systems this emulator will cover. But like I say, this tutorial is for NEC, NEC. So PC Engine, and if we select PC Engine here by just left clicking on it, we then locate our game which we want it to play. So let's just grab a game, and I'm going to choose Aero Blasters. And there we go, so I've already set up my controller, so this is working just fine. And we've also got the frames per second at the bottom here, which is running at a really good speed, 60 FPS. And so this side of the emulation with the PC Engine Hue cards, uh, you can load these directly with a zipped format file and they run just fine like this one. Okay, so let's just move on to PC Engine or Turbo Graphics CD. So this one's going to be a slight bit different. And what we're going to do, we're going to put some BIOS files into place to make this happen. So I'm going to just close this down and I'm going to reopen this. So we need to go to settings for this and we need to go to firmware. 
Now you've got many different regions of BIOS files here and if you've got a game you want to emulate, say you've got a US version of a, a PC Engine CD game, then you've got two options here for this, PC Engine CD, US and also Japan. So in my case I'm using a Japanese version of a game so I'm going to go and set this BIOS in place. So for this one we need to select Super CD ROM system. So as you can see this is also Japan and my physical copy of this game is also Japanese. Uh, as many of you are aware most of these games were only available in Japan. Okay, so once we've done that, we're just going to close this window down and we're actually going to go ahead and play the game. So if we go back to load, if we just go back down to NEC, NEC, PC Engine. So we have in here different folders and one of these is my PC CD Engine game. So if we select this and just bear in mind uh, the CD side of emulation using this emulator uh, requires you to unextract the zip folders they might come in and you are going to be selecting the .q files so double left click And here we go, so this is a PC Engine CD or TurboGrafx CD up and running just fine. So let's just mess around with the settings on this side. So if we just go to settings and if we go to five times, just to make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see above here we now got a PC Engine CD option which has appeared. So if we want to configure a controller specifically for PC Engine CD games we just go to control and we can play around with settings just there. Uh, but I don't think you're going to need to, the initial configuration is going to be fine. And there we have it, so this is PC Engine CD up and running using Ares, which is looking really good. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. So we now have Super Graphics. So if we reopen Ares again, and I'm going to go to Load and of course NEC or NEC, and this time I'm going to go to Super Graphics. From here, I'm going to select my zipped game of this. And there we go, we now have Super Graphics up and running using this emulator. So, really cool stuff, and it really does a really good job of emulating these classics. Okay, so finally, we got Super Graphics CD. So, I'll just close this down and I'm going to reopen just for easiness. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go back down to firmware. So Super Graphics CD is going to need a Japanese BIOS and just like PC Engine, Super Graphics, these were mainly sold in Japan. So we need a BIOS file for Super Graphics CD. So if we double left click on this one and we locate our BIOS for this. Close down, load. And if I go back to NEC and I go back to Super Graphics CD, now just bear in mind that, like I said a minute ago, your CD side of things, you're looking specifically for .q files. So some of these might come down in download in .bin and .q files, but the ones to load the games you need are .q. So if you extract your own copy of the game, use whatever extraction program you need, it's the .q which you need for these games to work. So we're gonna go inside my Super Graphics CD and here we go, so we got the Q file, just like we did a minute ago with the other CD system. Double left click on this one.
And there we go, so it's the same game I've used for PC Engine CD and Super Graphics CD, but it works perfectly. So, um, other things you might consider messing around with are the settings, and of course we like video settings here. So you can do a lot here, if we go to size you can change the size of the window, I'm going to just lower it down to say three times. Okay, we've also got sort of resolution settings just to make the games look not so pixelated. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go to settings, if I go to output, I've got different settings here. So if I go to pixel perfect, you'll get a smaller window, which is a lot smaller, but obviously you're going to get a lot more detail. Okay, something else to look at under video settings is if we go back to settings again, and we go down to shader. Uh, shaders are a kind of filter, so you're going to get different effects. So let me show you how this works. If I go back to scale integer, like I was on a minute ago, to get a bigger screen. Okay, so if I go back down to shader, and if I go to blur, it's got a very slight blur now. And again, if I go to settings and I go to shader, and let's do some a little bit different, which will really show you what this does. So if I go to scan line, you'll get a scan line just like an old school CRT TV. Uh, so that's up to you to mess around with. We got uh, grit scan lines. Uh, you, you know, there's some crazy stuff here. So I'm going to just go to none. I like the original look of this. And if we go back to settings again, if we go down to video, we can also change the colors of uh, games you're playing. So luminance, for example, let's just check this out. So if I just drag this slider down, let's just see what goes on here. Saturation. And there you go. So if that's your thing, if you feel like you want to make a game really dark and almost black and white, up to you. So something else you can do with all of these systems that you're emulating, that's the PC Engine, the PC Engine CD, Super Graphics and Super Graphics CD, is of course save game states. So this means you can save a particular part of the game and load it again later on in the day if you wish. So let me give you an example of how these save states are working. So right now I'm playing this game, I'm going to just play this and I'm going to choose to save it right just here. So what I need to do to save this place in the game is just go to tools. I'm going to save state and I'm going to use slot one. So you've got nine different slots for nine different game saves, but I'm going to use slot one. And if you want to use any more game saves, then you obviously go to slot two, slot three, and so on. But for this one, being my first save, I'm slot one. And we can see here it says save state. So let's restart the game, play it again. And I'm gonna to go to load where I just saved this. Okay, so I clearly just died. If I go back to tools, if I go to load state, and if I select slot one, as you can see, this is now loaded where I just was a minute ago before I died, and I died again. And there's other different settings you can use on Ares emulator, such as visual settings. So let's check this out. If we go to settings again, and if we just go down to video, if you look here at the bottom, you're going to find different options for HD quality and ultra HD quality. So dependent on the type of screen you're using to play these neck games, that's entirely up to you. But the option is there if you choose higher quality or ultra high quality, whatever. So I'm going to just use UHD and just close out of this. And you won't see much of a difference on the screen. But in your case, say you're using a 4K TV, then you will likely see a huge big difference. So obviously, if you're going to be using Ultra HD mode, you're also going to realize there's a hell of a lot more pixels in the way because of that definition. Okay, so that's Eris Emulator. So as for the tutorial, I've taught you how to play PC Engine games or TurboGrafx-16 games. Also, PC Engine or TurboGrafx CD games, Super Graphics and Super Graphics CD. I've also showed you how to configure your controller and you're definitely going to want to do that. And I recommend just playing about with the settings for video settings to give you the full 
resolution or the look that you require is a very good emulator so if you've not checked out my other tutorials i got a lot of different emulation tutorials ranging from the tangerine auric right up until the gamecube era and i do front ends as well also consider looking at my patreon and buy me a coffee if you like this tutorial please subscribe and hit notifications so next time i upload a video emulation video you will know it's there and you can watch it so until next time see you later